Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about bladder carcinoma. This is an overview and introduction. Bladder carcinoma is a common urogenital cancer. It is common in the elderly and is strongly associated with smoking. Here, I am drawing a middle-aged person in the toilet urinating. Before going into the presentation of bladder ca cancer, it's important to revise the anatomy. Here is the kidney, the ureter, which brings urine into the bladder where urine is stored. When the bladder is full, urine passes through the urethra and goes out. There is the prostate below the bladder in men. And in women, there is the uterus, which is behind the urinary bladder. Here is a growth in the bladder, which signifies or represents carcinoma. Let us compare the normal bladder and look at its progression to carcinoma of the bladder. The most common carcinoma is urothelioma, which is tumor from the urothelium. This type of cancer is sometimes referred to as transitional cell carcinoma because at the end of the day, these are transitional cells. So let us look at the layers of a normal bladder. This is the lumen of the bladder where urine is stored. The inner layer of the bladder is called the urothelium, and it is made up of transitional epithelial cells. Below it is the basement membrane, which separates the transitional cell epithelium with the lamina propria. The lamina propria consists of many blood vessels. Below the lamina propria is the detrusor muscle, and then we have the adventitia, which is primarily fat. The cells within the urothelial layer, which are made up of transitional cells, can evolve and mutate due to several factors, and this will lead to abnormal cells and then progress to urothelioma or transitional cell cancer. Now there are a few types of urotheliomas. There is carcinoma in situ, which is essentially carcinoma confined to that layer. You have a sessile tumor or papillary tumors which project out. These tumors can then subsequently keep growing and actually grow deeper and penetrate the other layers under it. This is where it becomes dangerous. The risk factors for developing bladder cancer, especially urothelioma, is smoking, exposure to certain chemicals, which won't be discussed, cyclophosphamide, a medication, aristolucic acid, age greater than 40, and there are some other minor risk factors which are not mentioned. The signs and symptoms of bladder cancer include hematuria, mainly, with or without pain. It's usually painless hematuria, and presentation of this should always ring alarm bells, especially if in the presence of the other risk factors, such as age. Other signs and symptoms can include renal colic. There can be blood clots in the urine, dysuria, frequency, urgency, and urinary retention. There can be systemic signs of malignancy, including fever, weight loss, and night sweats. And therefore, the investigation to order upon such presentation is you can do a bedside urinalysis, urine cytology to actually look at malignant cells, full blood count to check for anemia, EUCs to check for electrolyte urea creatinine, which is a good marker for kidney function, CRP, which can identify signs of malignancy, inflammation, or infection. The ultrasound of the bladder and kidney is a very good investigation for imaging. 
Finally, there's the invasive, cystoscopy, which is gold standard, actually. And this is where the bladder can be visualized from within. So you could see the urothelial layer. And also with this, a biopsy can be formed of the growth of the tumor. And this can be ex subsequently examined. The most common types of bladder cancer is urothelial carcinoma, as I mentioned, which is the most common. And this is also known as transitional cell carcinoma. There's also other types of bladder cancers, including squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. After obtaining the biopsy of the tumor within the bladder, the tissue is examined for malignancy, whether it's present or not. If malignancy is confirmed, the next step is to stage the tumor because this will then tailor the management. The use of PET scan or CT scan can help stage the bladder tumor accurately and to see what layers of the bladder are involved and to see if the tumor has spread elsewhere around the body. So let us recap the layers of the urinary bladder. Here on the top is the bladder lumen, again, which stores urine. The urothelium, which is composed of the transitional epithelial cells. Below this is the basement membrane, the lamina propria under it, and then you have the muscle layer called the detrusor muscle. And there's an inner and outer part, or a superficial and deep. Below the detrusor muscle is the adventitia, which is the fat layer. The World Health Organization staging of bladder tumors include low malignancy potential, which include carcinoma in situ, or TA, which include sessile or papillary tumors. The low malignancy potential make up the majority of bladder tumors seen. After low malignancy potential, the World Health Organization has the low grade stage, which is where the bladder tumor has grown to the deeper layers. And this is T1. T1 involves the growth reaching the basement membrane and the lamina propria. There is T2A, where the tumor goes past the lamina propria and invades the superficial muscle layer. The high grade stage includes T2B, which is where the tumor has extended all the way towards the deep layer of the detrusor muscle. T3 is where the tumor has invaded the perivesical tissues. T4 is tumor invading adjacent organs or the tissues of those organs. From here, the tumor can metastasize via hematogenous spread, local spread, or lymphatic spread. The staging of the bladder tumor into low grade and high grade is important. It is important because this will tailor the treatment. And the treatment will depend on if the tumor has invaded the muscle layer or not. So the management, the treatment, focuses on non-muscle invasive disease and muscle invasive disease. Muscle invasive disease has poorer prognosis. In non-muscle invasive disease, treatment options include T-U-R-B-T, or TURB-T, where you resect the tumor, essentially. Or there is a method called intravesicular chemotherapy, where the chemotherapy agent, in liquid form, is injected into the bladder and acts locally there. Finally, there is cystectomy, which is removal of the bladder. This, of course, means that the ureter, which brings urine down to the bladder, has to be reconnected somewhere so that urine can go out somewhere else. Now let's focus on muscle invasive bladder carcinoma, 
which as mentioned has a poorer prognosis. Here the patient undergoes neoadjuvant chemotherapy prior to surgery. Surgery will involve radical cystectomy, which is removing the bladder. This will be followed by urinary diversion. This urinary diversion is done in order to divert the urine flow elsewhere. And this can be done by taking part of the small intestine, joining it with the ureter, and creating a stoma. Or the ureter can drain into the large intestine. Post-surgery, chemotherapy is used again. The chemotherapy of choice nowadays is cisplatin and 5-fluorouracil. However, radiation is also offered with chemo for bladder cancer, and thus chemo agents used vary. 